Hello, this is Odil Hadas from Tracepan Communications, and today's video will be about GPON transmission basics. If you haven't watched our video about introduction to GPON, we strongly recommend that you watch that one first, uh, unless you have the background about what GPON is. So, as a beginning, as background to the GPON transmission basics, let's start with one of the characteristics of the optical splitter. As you may remember uh, and or may know, GPON has one unit. This is the OLT in the service provider's point of presence. It goes through a splitter, sometimes more than one splitter, and then it goes to the customers. Now, uh, one of the important characteristics of this splitter is high isolation between the customers. So if we have two customers, call them Harry and Tom, whatever one sends, the other cannot get. There's very high isolation. So Harry's data will not be seen by Tom and vice versa. Only the OLT will see what they're sending. And in the other direction, whatever the OLT sends, all the customers will see. Uh, this is an important uh, point to remember, put this in the back of your mind, and we'll get back to this later. Now, let's talk about the downstream transmissions. The way it works is that whatever the OLT sends, all the ONUs can see. So if OLT sends different packets, every, it's up to the ONU to determine if a packet is intended for it or not. Uh, they are marked. For example, here we have A, B, and C. Uh, each one has a different header. The header says this is a broadcast message which is intended for everyone, or it's intended for ONU ID 1, 2, 3, etc. And then only that ONU has to look at it. The other ONUs have to ignore it. Uh, but every ONU gets all the transmissions. Now, proper ONUs will not look at data which is not intended for them. But there is a potential security risk here because the fiber we're seeing here comes to a customer's home. And if a customer has some device that can look at all the data, then he or she has access to all the downstream transmissions of all the customers. And this is a potential security risk. So uh, to address this, there's a mechanism called AES encryption, Advanced Encryption Standard 128-bit key. Now, how does that work? The OLT is the one to initiate the process because it's a master of the network, but the OLT cannot, or it's not correct for the OLT to generate the key because if the OLT would generate the key, then all the ONUs would see it. And then you you've lost the whole point, the whole sense of the encryption. So the OLT requests the key and then the ONU generates the key. Now let's get back to Tom and Harry. If an ONU sends a key, only the OLT can see it. The other ONUs will not see it because of this isolation. So this way, this key is actually kept between this ONU and the OLT. Now, every time the OLT requests a key, it's a different one. The ONU has a random number generator. So the OLT initiates, the ONU generates the key. And then when the OLT receives it, it defines the key switching time, which means starting from when this key will be effective, and then which ports within the ONU will be encrypted. Uh, ports are gem ports. We will mention this in a minute again, if you don't know it as a reminder. Um, and then once this is done, uh, the OLT and ONU are ready to start encrypting the traffic. And of course, since both ends have the key, uh, the ONU can decrypt whatever the OLT sends. Now, in GPON, the AES encryption is only in the downstream because in the upstream, we don't have this security issue. Every ONU, whatever the ONU sends, only the OLT can send because of this isolation. Uh, in newer, more advanced technologies like XGSPON, XGPON1, and NGPON2, uh, there's also an option for encryption in the upstream, but this will be discussed in a separate video. Okay, uh, now, after talking about the downstream, let's talk about the upstream. In the upstream, the challenge is different. 
the challenge is that different ONUs all transmit in the same media, the same shared media, and someone needs to control them and make sure they each one gets its time slots and they don't collide. This is exactly TDMA, time division multiple access, which means the OLT controls the timing or every one, every element, every ONU transmits in a different time slot. So the OLT assigns time slots, BW map, for every ONU to transmit its upstream transmissions. And this ensures collision-free transmission. There's another factor to consider because, uh, which is the different distances of ONUs from the OLT. They can be, one can be further away than the other. So, uh, and, and this distance means delay. So when an ONU activates, part of the activation process is for the OLT to determine how far away it is and assign it an equalization delay. So this is to compensate for the different distances, uh, which means if an ONU is closer to the OLT, it will get higher delay so that from the OLT's point of view, if it tells a certain ONU, you start transmitting a time slot 55, it will always, the OLT will always get it at the same time. Now, as you can see, when everything works as expected, you get the transmission for ONU A and then for ONU, sorry, ONU 1, ONU 2, ONU 3, and so on. Now, another factor to remember, um, the number of time slots that each ONU gets is not necessarily the same because it depends on how much bandwidth that ONU needs. Um, and this is dynamic. Every frame, the OLT can assign different time slots to every ONU. Um, in this diagram, it looks as if it's always there's always transmission, but there can be gaps. There can be quiet times in the upstream. Uh, we mentioned the ONU activation process. So just as a brief, uh, this is a process defined in G984.3 and clause A6, figure A5. This is the standard for GBOM. Uh, there's a diagram that shows exactly what the activation process is. We'll not get into this right now. It defines a, a state machine with five states. It starts from the initial state 01 and completes with the operation state 05, which means the ONU is active. Uh, do not confuse activation with ONU bring up. ONU bring up is a different process. It's actually a process that includes the activation and then some additional OMCI messages. And this is described in G988, which is the, the standard for uh, G988. We have a separate, we actually have a webinar on a website that also talks about this. Uh, there are two additional states that the ONU can transition to, but are not part of the normal activation. They're called pop-up 06 and emergency stop state 07. Uh, a few terms, we I think mentioned it in our previous video about GPON introduction, but in case you didn't watch it, here it is again. Uh, TCONT, this is a grouping of logical connections for the purpose of upstream bandwidth assignment. And I will show how it is, how the, the TCONTs are actually utilized in the PON. Uh, the idea is that the bandwidth map or the time slots are actually not assigned to an ONU or not only to an ONU, but within actually to a TCON within an ONU. An ONU can have several TCONs and each one is treated as a single entity for the purpose of upstream bandwidth assignment. There are different TCONs that are defined in G984.3. And as you can see, they have different quality of service requirements or assignments, fixed bandwidth, a short bandwidth, and so on. And this is because since this is the element that gets the actual uh, assignment for transmission, it is strongly linked with quality of service. So let's see how it works. Uh, going back to the previous diagram of upstream transmission, but then adding more details, it will look like this. Every ONU has at least one TCONT, which is the default TCONT. It will always have the same ID as the ONU. And it may have another TCONT. Every bandwidth map assignment includes the TCONT ID. It's actually called alloc ID, allocation ID. So to be more, to show a more detailed view, when an OLT assigns BW maps, uh, let's say first for ONU1, it will assign a time slot for, or a number of time slots for TCONT1, and then you get this package A, this packet A, and then to ONU2 here, we're not showing the TCONT because there's just one TCONT, this is the assumption, so we get B, 
then can go can get C and F. Both of them are from ONU3, but they will have separate BWMAP assignments. Okay, because there are different TCOMs. And then you can have a different assignment for an ONU from a TCOM coming from a different ONU. So they can be adjacent C and F, or they can be gaps, there can be A and then E, both of which are from ONU1. Uh, in this example, we're also seeing some gap where there is no transmission. So this is actually the more accurate way of how the bandwidth are assigned. And as you can see, the TCONs are actually the elements that get the assignments. And here is an example. Uh, this is using TracePass GPON Analyzer, GPON Expert, that shows you what the BWMAP allocations look like and the corresponding upstream transmissions. You can see an example of a frame that has three BW maps, the allocation ID, which is actually the TCONT ID. We have one for 260, start time 34, end time 13, 8, 3, 9, one for alloc ID 4, one for alloc ID 261. And you can see the corresponding upstreams for these TCONTs. Okay, so th there's a downstream with the assignments and the upstreams coming from the different TCONTs, which maybe from different ONUs coming in the right time slots. Uh, now, another term to remember which is related to this is dynamic bandwidth allocation. Not all the users and all the services need their peak bandwidth all the time. So even if you have a TCONT which is assured bandwidth or fixed bandwidth, it doesn't make sense to assign it bandwidth or time slots if it doesn't need it. Now, if the OLT would do this, it would just be a waste of resources. So there's a mechanism called dynamic bandwidth allocation, DBA, which allows the OLT to assess the bandwidth needs of all the ONTs or ONUs and asks, asks them actually what they need. It sends it a request, please report your traffic needs. The ONU says, I need this and this much bandwidth. And then uh, the OLT, based on priorities and and the different TCON types assign it, assigns it the bandwidth. So if someone has fixed bandwidth or short bandwidth, it would always get what it requests. If someone has best effort, then if there's not enough bandwidth available, it will get less. And this allows service providers to define flexible service options uh, over subscription levels and service level agreements. And remember, this is only in the upstream. This is something that's very important because sometimes People who are new to GPON don't remember this. They think DBA is also for downstream. Another term, uh, important term to understand uh, GPON is GEM, GPON encapsulation method. GEM actually means uh, how it's actually a method for encapsulating the user data, which is based on Ethernet frames, into the GPON frames. And I will not get into more details than this right now. GEM ports represent the logical connections that are associated with the traffic flows. So actually every GEM frame has a GEM header, which indicates the port and so on. If we look at the hierarchy, we have the PON, the ONUs, the TCONs, and the GEM ports, identified accordingly by ONU ID, alloc ID for TCON, and port ID for GEM port. And Every ONU has at least one TCONT, which is the default TCONT, the same ID as the ONU, and then can have more than one. Every port, sorry, every TCONT can have one or more gem ports. And usually if there are different gem ports under the same TCONT, they are they have similar quality of service requirements. And if they're under different TCONTs, they may have different quality of service requirements. TCONT may represent different, sorry, ports may represent different services on the same, for the same customer. Or if it is fiber to the building, for example, it may be different customers who are connected to the same ONU, but each customer has his own port. So if you'd have something like this, it's the same service that's delivered to different customers. That's it for today's video. Uh, if you'd like to learn more about this technology and others, you're welcome to go to our website and watch our webinars. We have detailed webinars there. So go to tracepan.com category webinars. You can learn more about our company in www.tracepan.com or contact us at info at tracepan.com. If you liked our video, give us a like, 
and you're welcome to subscribe to our video channel. Thank you very much.